got something in this trap here. I thought I could see some eyes as we were driving down, or some ears poking out of this little taller alfalfa here. Just cut the summer and we go in here. And so we got something, I can't quite tell what it is. It's either a really small coyote, or it could be a fox. Let's go take a look. Got a bridger number three here, which is a little overkill, if you ask me, but got the job done. And sometimes you just got to deal with what you got. It's the only thing I had at the time. We'll kind of scrape some of this fur off the trap and reset that. I'm going to take a look here. It's a smaller coyote. We got some tracks here. But I think it's a little frosty. Guard hairs, guard hairs look okay. Got a little white tip at the tail. You don't see that every every day, but you do see that. Belly. Yeah, he's got a little pink on the belly. Um, she. <clears throat> I've seen that quite often this year. Pink on the belly. Um, great day. <clears throat> kind of excited. I didn't grab any tools. We're not too far away from the truck. Did do a little damage to the dog here on this trap. So I think what I'm gonna do, I think what we're gonna do is just pull this trap and um, maybe reset it another day. We got a big day, it's a nice day. We got other things to do. So we'll come back later and reset this if we get a chance. We got back to the truck and realized we forgot the old 22. So we had to come back here anyways. And so I thought, well, since we're coming back here, we might as well remake this set and bring some supplies with. So since we got the trap out already, I think instead of putting the trap in the original spot, I think I want to move it to the outside of the catch circle here. We got the old bridge number three, and he did some damage to the dog here, which is typical. Try to get it straightened out the best I can. Probably don't have the right tool for that. Those guys running dogless traps, I understand it. Kyle always. Tends to do some damage to the dogs. Time it gets out of the trap. Let's see what we got here. I got this little tool. I think it's like eight dollars for this tool, something like that. Best thing I ever bought. Better than sliced bread. Stick that in there. Adjusted. A little more. And that's pretty good. You want that pan, you know, about as down far as you can level at least. Every trap's a little bit different. Still got some hair on here. Ah, it'll be fine. So got this homemade dealio <clears throat> used to have a wood handle well the metal handle on there works a lot better I think that wood stuff and then I can pound it in here Ooh, this shirt's nice and dry and soft or did I just get lucky and find a hole I think I got lucky and found a hole there's all these little mole hills around here which is the reason I sat here initially but I really like, you can see this long, longer tree roll and we're kind of in a clearing. I can just imagine the coyotes kind of coming down this tree roll looking for a mouse or something. <clears throat> and behind us we've got a bale. The coyotes just like bales it seems to uh, bed by or jump up on top of to see what's going on. Otherwise I didn't see any sign here. No tracks, no scat. She's froze. 
Let's see. I only got this dug out, maybe. <clears throat> it's always nice to trap critters in the winter because the fur is so much better, but when you got a pound out of trap dead with a chisel, <clears throat> just it gets old fast. So, let's see. Twenty four, twenty three inch rebar stakes, half inch. <clears throat> I'm confident in this ground they will hold. It'll freeze as well. Everybody's got to make kind of a little pocket here for the chain. And that's one of the reasons why I run smaller chain. Some guys like number three chain. I just like the number two. It's just a hair smaller and makes it a little bit easier to hide that chain on the frozen ground. You don't have to sit here on the wind blowing 20 miles an hour in your face trying to make a set. You gotta deal with a whole bunch of chain. I should have this done by midnight. Two uh, number two traps I like better when the ground is gets frozen. It's just easier to bed. These big tanks are a little bit more tricky to get in there solid. It takes more time. I think that's okay for a starting point. I'm gonna throw a little salt on here. Anti-freeze flakes, I should say. <clears throat> Take our sifter. <clears throat> Get all this dry dirt around here from the mole hills, and it hasn't rained here since July. Lost our pan cover. Uh, normally I like to use landscape fabric for a pan cover. The wax paper does the job. Whatever you got. Sometimes I end up using a Menards bag from the back seat of the pickup truck that's been rolling around all summer. room. I wouldn't go a day without this. Get it packed in there really good. This keeps your hands out of there. Not that the trap would hurt you. It's just an inconvenience when you get your thumb in there and you can't get your thumb out very easily. Something like that. I always give it a good test. It seems to be okay. When the ground's froze, sometimes you just can't get it perfect. But this is really good. I'm going to add a little bit more antifreeze, and then I like to kind of not let them know, spread it all over the place a little bit. <clears throat> I'm good with that. And then do our best to blend this in. It's always easier said than done.
So I've got a little bit of a depression here, not much. Um, I'm going to try to make the, the pan the lowest spot. Uh, it's kind of blended in. <clears throat> I'm okay if it's not perfectly blended. I kind of want to make you know make it look like it's active. Something's happening here. <clears throat> but just kind of the edges of where I messed with, I like to blend that in. All right, I think that's good. I wait. I honestly don't remember what my son was with when we set this trap last. I don't remember what we put in there. I'm just gonna. Don't even know what I have with. Left all the bait at home, except for a couple things here. <clears throat> um, I know I didn't use coyote urine because there's so many deer here. I didn't want the deer coming. Um, I think what I'm going to do, since there's so much scent here, I'm just going to put a touch of gland lure in here, just to kind of make the coyote focus on this spot or whatever critter comes through here. Got some yodel dog here, Glandler. Just what I have with me. I'm just gonna put it in here just to hopefully it'll focus the coyote on coming here. I mean there's all this we got blood, blood from the dispatch right there. Um we've got the original dirt hole set with bait in it yet, I'm sure. Okay, I'm gonna find some scat here. I know he's found some, right here's the scat. I'm gonna try not to use my fingers and gloves, not that it probably doesn't matter, but I'm gonna set that over here. Give the coyote some attempt something to focus on. And then I'm just gonna take some of this loose material, just kind of use it for a backing a little bit. There should be lots of scent on that. You know, sometimes you, those coyotes really stink with urine when you get to this get to the catch circle, but I can't smell anything today. So that's it. We will check it every day for the next few days and uh, see what else happens. I'm a little surprised we got something here, to tell you the truth. All right.